Hey guys, Terrence here again. That's my best uh, Thomas Burton impression. Hey guys, Terrence here again with another Neptune Systems brought to you Let's Talk Reef. We've been doing this for well over a year, maybe even approaching two. I haven't even two, checked. Two years at least, I would say. Paul's here with me. Uh, we're having a great time already. We did a, an incredible rehearsal, had a lot of fun, and glad to have you guys joining us here for another Let's Talk Reef. Uh, Dan Marino and Tim Allen are both in our live stream. I... I mean, to get that kind of notoriety. I'm, I'm pretty, I, mean, I feel pretty special. Yeah. You know? Uh, Battle OCR, Queen City Reefs, Rogue Aquariums. We've got all kinds of people that are joining us like usual. Appreciate you guys coming out for one of these uh, uh, shows every week or two. Yep. Two weeks ago, we had Sanjay. The man. The man. The I photon. Was, yep. I was at home, mm -hmm. and he was, uh, you know, he was joining us for some really interesting reef talk. Yeah, it was a great episode, um, you know, and a uh, great interview, um, and Sanjay uh, has a great tank. I love what he does with the Apex. Yeah, he, no doubt, I, and I was surprised at how much he's using some of the things right now, but for you guys out there, if you're interested in seeing somebody, some, you know, particular reef uh, uh, celebrity, so to legend. speak. Legend. Legend, yeah. Yeah. Let me know who, and I'll see if I can get them on the show, and let me know what questions you want me to ask them, and. We'll see about having it happen. In the meantime, we're still not doing trade shows. We say yeah. that every time. Uh, but, uh, you know, they we, they you know we're, we're gearing up for the fall. And right now we would be come you know, about a week back from, from uh, Macna. Mm -hmm. you know? yep, yep. Things are, would be finally kind of returning to normal a little bit um, if this were normal times. Um, there is still the show in Texas. It's the new normal. It's the new normal, right? <laughs> I'm so sick of that phrase. I am too. I am so I am, sick, I am sick of a lot of things right now. I just, you know, everyone do what you want to oh, do. Oh, look, we've got somebody from Fresno. Oh. How's the smoke? Yeah, it's, uh, it cleared out a little bit today here. Here it did. Yes, They yes, got so. different kind of flow with all of it. We were, we're getting smoked out over here. We had a day, I think it was last Wednesday, that looked like it was right out of some sort of... Uh, it was out of Blade Runner, dude. It, it, was, it, it, it was, was out of Blade Runner, horrible. for sure. We yeah. woke up, I woke up um, usually right when the sun's coming up mm -hmm. and like 6, 6.30, something like that. It was pitch black. Yep. And I'm, then I, you know, getting ready, whatever, I, you know, by 7, 7.30, the sun's up, right? It's still pitch black. All the lights in the neighborhood are on. It wasn't, the, it wasn't until probably 9 o'clock that it even looked like the sun had come up yet. But then when the sun did come up, <laughs> it, it was, was this brown orange color. You can Google video uh, pictures of yeah. it. It's it's something to see um, at the marine inversion later. Yeah. Um, but um, so we've been smoked out a little bit here in the last uh, couple weeks uh, in the in the San Jose area, uh, Morgan Hill, and uh, the fires are running rampant. Um, but um, well, we're know. still doing reef keeping and we're still apexing. Yes. And we've had uh, we've had some great content come out over the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, the first piece that came out was a great short video for those people who are not yet in the Apex ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, from, um, you know, from Thomas, right? Thomas Burton. Thomas this Burton. Is, uh, this is, you've, you've seen him on BRS. He yes. has been... Um, he uh, is a ball of energy. Wow. Uh, he has been basically showcasing products, right? Right. And um, a lot of the products that he brings are, you know, pretty straightforward. This is an auto top-off. This is a pump. But he tackled the Apex system um, this week and... Uh, Hats off to you, Thomas. The best I way I can you, explain you really it, put it together his, well. his opening part to, to oh. the, that video, it was a didgeridoo. Yeah. We, basically, you know, on a didgeridoo, they basically make sound on the in and the out. Right. right? So it's right. like, it was, that was pretty much that that whole pitch in the beginning of that video. It was and great. Terrence and I uh, have been doing this for a long time and know how to make a pitch. And uh, both no of us texted each other and um, we, we referenced that phrase and it was just... Great job, Tom. Yeah, Great no job. doubt. No doubt. And then, uh, <laughs> not too long after that is the was the kickoff for a brand new series that BRS is doing. Mm -hmm. That uh, I've been talking for a long time with Ryan about uh, how to approach this, and he has some incredible ideas, Ryan from Bulk Reef Supply, on how to really. Um, squeeze the most out of your apex right right and really get the most benefit you can 
for everything, all the equipment on your reef tank. Um, and the, the series is called Mastering Your Apex. Yeah, um, and it is, um, the first episode just came out mm -hmm. and it's talking about mastering a skimmer. And I think people like you and I kind of take a lot of that for granted, right? right? You know, we um, have been doing this for so long and oh, that's just how you would set up a skimmer, right? And uh, they really- But when uh, help, BRS takes it on. Yes, when they take it on, they take it on and they really broke it down to a point that um, I, I think is gonna be great for our customers. They're pros. I mean, in, in, in 13 minutes or whatever it was that Randy did, he went through, I, I think he said six or eight different things that- You can uh, do with the skimmer. Yeah, that you can do with the skimmer. And uh, uh, so what? What I once I saw that, and we're, there's gonna be, I don't know how many these are gonna do, but it's at least 20, mm -hmm. um, dealing with your return pump and you know all kinds of different things that are happening and different equipment that's on your aquarium, how to make it better mm -hmm. and how to improve your overall uh, aquarium experience using the Apex. And so I, I said, you know what, those are great videos, but sometimes, especially our audience and you guys here on, on this show, want uh, you know to dig in deeper and to know kind of more of the how-to and the tips and tricks and get into the things in a maybe in a live stream that you can't do in a video without boring the heck out of people. Right. So and we'll bore the heck out of them right here. <laughs> well, get some color commentary, <laughs> maybe, of course, yeah. too, right? But, um, you know, it was the cliff notes, right? Uh -huh. It was, uh, you know, hey, this is how you do this, this is how you do this, and it was showing everything, but it was happening so quickly, and uh, you weren't, uh, you know, basically getting down into all the details we right. thought we would go through today and show kind of how you do that. Break down the game film is mm -hmm. what I called it, right? Which yeah. is, so we're going to actually play sections of the video okay um, and now one of the things the first trick I'm going to teach you guys about watching videos especially reef keeping videos mm. for those that you don't uh, that don't know yes is tell there's them a our secrets yes tell them. yes there's a little trick in uh, in YouTube where you can click the gear and you can select the speed at which you want to watch stuff back mm -hmm. and if you're an amateur you can watch it at one and a quarter right if you're intermediate about one and a half and if you're really good you can do 2.0 and um, the way you do this, there's a gear down at the mm -hmm. bottom um, and uh, you can select speed. They used to have this very hidden. Um, now they've made it a much yes. easier to, to obtain. Um, but uh, you can choose you know, um, any of these speeds. Um, some people uh, you, uh, are not possible to watch at the 2X. <laughs> yes. uh, Thomas, you cannot Thomas watch him. Thomas Burton. He's already at 2X, so if you're at 4X <laughs> at that point. Right. Um, Randy's very difficult to watch at 2X. Yes. Uh, because he does a great job of delivering a lot of information. And they're well edited, they're yes. tight. Those, yes. those videos are super tight. But in the interest of time, um, we're going to do it at 1x. We're going to do it one and a half. Yes, yes. At one and a half x, we're going to do the videos, mm -hmm. and so we're going to go ahead and kick off with uh, kind of how this series is, you know, is going to go for skimmers from Randy right here. So Vincent's going to cue this up for us. Okay, this is the mastering. Yeah, mastering your apex. Ooh, mystery theater. Yeah, we're Look doing mystery this. science theater yeah. without the. Uh, yeah. Which you want the inevitable the silhouettes. Today we're talking protein skimmers and how to use the Apex to improve its performance, increase safety, protect from failures, make maintenance much easier, and actually save you some money along the way. I'll show you how to tackle the most common skimmer issues that afflict almost every single reefer at some point. But more importantly, you'll see how easy it is to set up a handful of Apex alerts and tasks to avoid them all in the first place. And in the end, I've got a hack that you can use so your skimmer cup will never overflow again, no matter what. I can't okay. So there he's showed five different things. He's going to save us money, mm -hmm. make it safer, right? Yep. Um, you know, going to basically, again, master using your skimmer, mm -hmm. but with the Apex. And, uh, you know, he, he does go into, you know, some of the details on this. But I think especially when it comes to the hacks and some of the other stuff, we're going to be able to dig in a little bit deeper. Definitely. We do have uh, props. You know, some props here uh, so that some of the things that he talks about, we can, t you know, we can get into it a little bit more in detail. And uh, hopefully you guys will like it. Hopefully this is something that we can do. If there's enough content in each one, we can do one every week. If there's not quite enough content that we can uh, every like, two enhance can, we it, can we'll do it every it, other you know. week and combine two of them in one. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. So let's, let's first start out with uh, his first recommendation, which is awesome, which means it's not using programming, yep. right? Which is, is the first thing that we try to tell people over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know programming. Nope to really get the benefits out of your Apex. So, so let's see that let's next. See, let's see how he did it. Yeah. I matter what. I counted about a dozen potential skimmer issues that we're going to solve today with the Apex. Maybe even a couple you might not have thought were issues to begin with, let alone know this that you can I solve want. them. Starting with the most common and easiest to fix problem that reefers face with in some skimmers, and that is stopping them from overflowing and spewing nasty fish poo and waste when your return pump is off and the water level in the sump rises, which often creates more maintenance tasks like water changes. I say this is the easiest to solve because this layer of protection is automatically built into the task functions for setting up a skimmer. Okay. All right. So Randy takes you through our skimmer task. 
Okay, um, and um, I will take you through that, but I think a better way to think about things is... Um, it's not saying it's wrong. It's not wrong to do it this way, right? But I think the first thing you have to do is you have to talk about your return pump a little bit. And he's probably going to talk about that in another episode. Mm -hmm. But you have to think about, is there any point that your return pump should be off and your skimmer should be on? Return pump in the feed mode. Yeah. So your skimmer, so your return pump is off. Okay. Is there ever a situation where you'd want your oh, skimmer on in not. that situation? Absolutely not. Because, because what happens water when level is going to be too high? Exactly. When the when the return pump turns off, the uh, the sump level rises. Absolutely. You know, and then what that causes is all that hard work your skimmer has done. It just goes right back into your sump. Right. Because it's because basically that water level your skimmer is tuned for the normal water level in your sump. Exactly. And when you raise up the water level, it's out of tune, and now it's producing more water than bubbles, and mm -hmm. it just overflows. So it's very important to set up your return pump first and okay. get that working the way you want. Then to basically latch your skimmer onto that return pump. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the way that you do that, same way is you're going to do a task. Okay. Um, and the task. Somebody asked me recently, you know, where where how do I get to a task? It's the clipboard yeah, right next on, to the gears. Yeah, it was actually in the comments uh, yeah. uh, for his videos. Like the, somebody was like, yeah, how do I get to that? It's the clipboard next to the gear. You know? It's like checking um, off your tasks. Right. And so then you, uh, the easiest way to find a task that you're looking for is try to describe what you're doing. In this situation here, I'm looking for a return pump. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And the only two things that are there uh, is a return pump and a skimmer task. Right. So I'm going to select the return pump. Okay. And if you're running a core, the Neptune Systems return pump, this is not applied to you. Okay, this, this is, is a for a normal. Task just for that. This is for a normal on-off skimmer. If this is a DC return pump, you're still going to use this for the power supply on the DC mm -hmm. return pump, um, but uh, we're not going to get into the intensity levels there. Okay, so the first thing to do is select which outlet the return pump is connected to. Okay. okay? Um, so I already have that called return power. And if you use the standard uh, programming that is set up when you buy the Apex, like it would we discussed say, a couple weeks ago, or it three would say weeks return ago, pump. It would say return pump. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I rename that return power because I'm using a power mm -hmm. supply. And then um, this is, um, you know, do you want your return pump to turn off with a, a feed A cycle? Right. Okay. Um, and do you want to delay your return pump at all? And that, I usually answer that as no, right? Okay. Because when my feed cycle is over, right, so I've done the feeding, I turned off my pumps, I don't want my return pump to be off any additional period of time. Okay. Okay. Um, you may want to leave them on if you maybe want in tank flow for some for some period of time, like with your power heads. But I don't like doing that. Yeah, I, I, this is one I don't completely understand. But uh, as far as why it would be set to five, because I, I do think the way that you're talking about it is mm -hmm. the way most people would right. would generally want it to happen. So you set that to zero minutes. Okay. Okay. So I don't want I don't want my at the return end of your pump. at the end of your feed cycle, the feed cycle timer, which we'll talk about later, how to set that. When it finishes, the pump comes right back on. Yes, exactly. You know, um, I'm not going to send that over because I have some other stuff. But um, you know, that now then programs our return pump. Okay. Okay. So now the next question is, how do you program the skimmer? Right. Yes, Scott. You just and Randy used the the task list. You do the task here, um, and uh, you select first. You know, which outlet is your skimmer connected to? It's going to be outlet five by default. Okay. okay. Um, it's going to be called skimmer. Um, I rename mine skimmer power. Okay, and I click next. I then choose the outlet my return power is connected to. Right. And in this situation here, that is return power. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in this situation here, though, I do want to delay the amount of time that my skimmer um, turns back on after my return pump turns okay. on. Right. Because I don't want my skimmer and return pump right. this both is, simultaneously. This is what the re you really want to accomplish, which is, hey. After I need to stabilize my sump first mm -hmm. before I kick on that skimmer. And then you may also, um, if you have a refugium or something like that, you may not want to skim that food or additive or whatever right, right out of the water right away. So you may even want to delay go 15 minutes that period of time. 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. So, you know, I actually change that, change that to typically 15, 20 minutes. You right. know, I wait for my skimmer to turn right. back on. Right, right. Okay? And at that point, it's done. I'm going to go ahead and send that one over because we're going to kind of build this skimmer out okay. from scratch as we go through it. Okay, and at this point we are. Done so now with the we've skimmer. now we've really uh, taken care of you know the issue with feeding the tank and turning off the return pump and keeping the re the skimmer off for a certain amount of time, even after the return pump comes on to equalize it and to keep the foods in circulation and not be skimmed out. 
what we just did by those just clicking on check boxes and saying yes this is what I want to do is we made sure that that skimmer is not going to overflow because the return pump is correct off, you know um, because the skim because the sump level is increasing mm -hmm. okay so that is what we did um, with the return pump task and the skimmer task okay so the next thing that Randy talks about is in my opinion one of the most powerful things available on the Apex for preventing problems or alerting you of problems or disasters or whatnot. Let's first see if there's a couple of questions before we get to that video. Uh, let's see, anything interesting? Well, it looks like Derek is out there answering a lot of questions from us from Reef Automation, uh, which is good. It's like having another person on, mm -hmm. the, on the stream to answer our questions. Um, why don't you guys just reprogram the return pump to default to zero times delayed? Uh, that, that's a good question. Again, uh, some people uh, like to have the feed cycle just so power heads are on for mm -hmm. a period of time, then turn the return pump on. That's kind of how the task is uh, oriented. Um, I don't do that, so I switch it to zero, but I do know other people in the office that do it that way. Right, right. right? Engineers that do it that hey, way. Hey, look at this. <laughs> Randy Russell, power monitoring. Put that one up on the screen. Look at the guy's watching us Booyah. talk about him. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing what I usually do to them when all they're on the a live time, stream. All the so we'll see how I get it back to me. Um, okay, so power monitoring. Let's hear about power monitoring from Randy. Power outage. The next easiest thing we can do with the Apex is help protect our skimmer investment through immediate alerts and notifications for when it might need maintenance, when the pump or venturi air intake might be clogged, or even if the pumps failed completely. Again, a simple tasks function solves all three of these potential issues through monitoring your skimmer pump's power or wattage draw, which can actually alert you if the pump is not working as intended, such as it's drawing zero or near zero power, meaning it's completely dead or nearly there. Something often overlooked is that the skimmer is clogged with buildup and can actually draw less power than normal, telling you it needs maintenance, or your skimmer can draw more power than usual if your venturi is blocked or clogged, meaning less air into your skimmer and diminished performance. That's Set like up on filtration alone and can actually make your tank safe. Yeah, so uh, uh, Jonathan Shimsko says, uh, sounds fast. Yeah, we're running these at one and a half, yeah. so, uh, so we can, we can kind of burn through them. The first thing I want to do is we're going to use a little bit of our show and tell here, okay? This is a... Uh, this is a skimmer pump. This one happens to uh, come out of a, a Reef Octopus pump from a while ago. Um, and it's an AC pump. So the things that Randy's talking about work with AC pumps or with DC pumps. Yep. Okay. And the, how it's going to affect the pump are more or less the same, but there can be some slight nuances. But what's really cool is you could test for them um, by you know, crimping the, 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 uh, the air intake tube and whatnot. First thing I want to do is at least explain some of this stuff for those of you who don't know how it works. This is a, it, basically the same kind of pump as a return pump. Yep. There's just a few components that are a little bit different. The first is this, it's called the Venturi. This is what pulls in the air. Um, and this little guy here, you know, it could be blocked, in which case you're going to get you know, that increased power usage. So you could have you know, a big piece of algae or maybe a rag fell in the tank or who knows what that gets blocked in front of there. We call uh, that, you know, when the pump is blocked, right, it's getting an obstruction. Obstruction, like that, exactly. Right? But, go ahead. And then the next thing that can happen really with this little guy is this air intake can get clogged. And it can get clogged a couple of ways. One way um, that, that happens for a lot of people is it's not really clogged, but the tube falls over and into the water. And, so and it's, it's not pulling, pulling water. Yeah, it's right. pulling water and not air through there. Um, uh, the most common thing, though, is that it starts to get crud lining the inside, calcium carbonate and whatnot, inside there, reducing the, um, you know, the uh, diameter of the hole, mm -hmm. which reduces the amount of airflow, which then changes how much power it's using. Again, yep. it's going to start drawing more power. Sometimes it'll close altogether. Mm -hmm. um, with that. Um, so that's, this is a, 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 a very common thing that can be detected with power monitoring when something goes wrong there. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. Yep. So we're kind of diagnosed. Yeah, I'm just kind of breaking here. down what, you know, what, what really is happening with these, uh, with these skimmer pumps. So th the next thing that's a little bit different than a regular return pump is how the skimmer, because this is where I see a lot of problems on my skimmer, by mm -hmm. the way, um, is how they work. Instead of having a regular impeller, they have this thing uh, it's called a, a needle wheel or a pinwheel, and this chops up the air, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and what often happens with these is they get crud in them. They get uh, Cato algae is very common for going in there. Very common. And it'll slow down the pump. It'll make it use more power. It'll make it produce less air. It's, it's because of those um, uh, obstructions, right? It's creating more resistance, and when it creates more resistance, it uses more there's, power. Yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's basically all kinds of things that 
when it's just not running normal, you're going to see it in power monitoring yeah. um, in this particular pump. So, uh, so let's go through and, s and show how easy it is to set that up. It is very easy to set that up, but the first thing I want to do is actually show power consumption on a skimmer. You know, oh, good idea. So you can see what, what a real skimmer is doing you know, on a tank. So to do that, you click on the graph button, which is looks like the charts and graph. Then I'm going to select my skimmer wattage, right? So I go down here and I find an outlet that's called skimmer power wattage, okay. W. Okay, I'm going to select that. And we can see here that my skimmer, um, and I'll zoom in here a little bit for you guys, but it basically is running between 28 and 30 watts all the time. Right. Okay? And uh, by the way, that, that, that graph looks like it's going up and down like crazy. It's, it's, it's pretty much flat. It's pretty much flat. It's, it's so going, zoomed it's in. It's going all the time, right? Um, you, you can even look at that and say, okay, the average running wattage is 28.7 watts, has a minimum of 28, maximum of, 20, of, of 30. Okay, and these are data logging mm -hmm. intervals of every 10 minutes. Okay? okay, so this is every 10 minutes, it's creating a graph point. So it's not collecting every little piece of data in between, right? right where it's not seeing the big jump. But it's getting a good profile. Data. Okay, so Terrence talked a little bit about how a skimmer operates, right? And a skimmer, right, um, pulls in water and air. Mm -hmm. Okay, when it is only pulling in water, Okay, that means that there is less air in the skimmer. Correct. Right, and it's going to use more power in that situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so and that's the most common issue, right? Is, is skimmers pulling in only water and not air? Because Correct. Typically, the venturi is clogged or, the, or something or, like or that. Or the other th thing is just the pump dies. The, the pump dies, and that's right? That's zero. And that's when you see zero, right? Mm -hmm. And also, when there is an obstruction, it gets experiencing resistance. And guess what happens when it experiences resistance? It works harder. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so that's when you get those power alerts. Okay, to set up power alerts, again, guess what? There's a task, just like Randy showed. Okay, and we're going to click on the task button. And to find that, I'm just going to search the word power. Okay, bing, there is the power usage alarm. Okay. All right, um, the device has to be running for at least 24 hours. Okay. Well, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be, but... It, but if you but want it to figure out for you mm -hmm. what the ideal ranges are, like automatically for you, that's when you have to have it run 24 hours, right? Exactly. So what Apex Fusion does is it looks at that min and that max mm -hmm. and looks at the average and then does math. Right, and now it's and it makes recommendations. If it doesn't have enough data, it's not going to be able to make a good recommendation. Right. Okay. Um, and um, so we can select next. Okay, that basically explained everything. Then we're going to select skimmer power. Okay, and it autom automatically already uh, recommends 26 and 31. Really tight range. Really tight range because that's basically I don't really turn off my skimmer that often. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when I feed, I just put food in the tank. Um, I don't necessarily turn it off all that often. Um, but um, I'd probably widen it just a little bit. Okay, um, so I'd probably go 24 and 33, and that's when I would get alerts. And um, and that's essentially, now I would get alerts based on how the skimmer is operating. Okay. Okay. Um, and I can show you this in action too, because my skimmer needs to be cleaned right now. That whole calcification thing that Terrence right. talked about in the Venturi, I have that problem right now. Anytime my return pump turns off, the only way that I can get it back in is if I, you know, basically fiddle with it for a while and to get it to pull okay. air again. So my last water change was on, not last Friday, I was too busy, but on Friday the 4th. Um, and there's the, the power alarm. You saw you got right? the alert at 46. So I used to have the alert at 40 watts. Doesn't really matter. Um, and it, the skimmer was running 46 watts when it was clogged and not pulling any air. Okay, okay. well this is pretty super useful, right? Yeah, because when it's not pulling any air, it's not skimming. It's not pulling out all those organics. So you got a program right? to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. Uh, to, to, cl to clean the Venturi, you're saying? Eric is saying you should enable dark mode. You'd this have to do it dude, on my, on my I iPad forgot, to make I forgot, it happen. I forgot my iPad today. This is Terrence's iPad. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not as good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, man. It's here for you. I appreciate you bringing <laughs> it in. All right. All right. So um, how do we set this up? How do we set up the, the power monitoring? We, we just did. It's already done. How do we set up the... the so the alert is done. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we should do based on that? Um, I mean, you can um, create... Uh, actions based on power okay. monitoring, right? You know, like turn the skimmer off or something like okay. that. Um, I don't necessarily typically recommend those sort of things. Um, okay, you know, well, that's good to know. Because it lets, the biggest thing is knowing that there's a problem, right? right? Um, what I do typically is if I, for example, forget to unclog my Venturi after I turn my skimmer off and I'm gone for the day, I would just turn my pump off at that point. Okay. You know, um, because I already know what the situation is. Um, there's a, the if power commands, you can use those, but I find you get kind of in a circular logic sometimes so you have to be kind of clever in terms of how you okay. approach those. 
Excellent. All right. So power monitoring was that simple. And it's probably one of the best things to tell you what's going on with your skimmer, that it needs cleaning or that it's not operating in an ideal manner. It's one of the mm -hmm. best things, in my opinion. I always say it's like the crystal ball. Oh, well, right? you're going to see like, it on a bunch of videos. I'm sure Randy's it, got it, coming up. It lets you know about a problem before it really becomes a problem. For example, in my situation with the Venturi clog, I could not know my skimmer is skimming for three or four days. That, right. Then it becomes a problem. Or I can know right then and there my skimmer isn't really skimming. So. So the next thing uh, that we had coming up was uh, was feed mode. We kind of took care of that already. We took care of it. So so Randy not... takes care of it in one way, but we took care of that by just setting up our return pump. Right. 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 So, well, we don't need to go through that one, Vincent. I don't think uh, we'll we'll probably skip right ahead to uh, to the next thing that he talks about, which also is a broader topic. Uh, he Randy talks about it in um, in reference to a, a situation that happens with a skimmer. Let's see that on video. I begin to a few of the Apex add-ons or accessories. Look, but I think we can all agree that a website. Reaper's worst nightmare is yeah, the floor when you don't website. expect yeah. it. Whether it's an overflowing skimmer cup that spilled over the sump or an external skimmer plumbed outside the tank, knowing that water is not where it should be the moment it happens is 100% better than discovering it later after potential damage. The Apex fix for this potentially devastating issue is the Neptune LDK or leak detection kit and a quick six-step task function for adding it to your toolbox of prevention. Once you okay. Okay. There we go. So. A lot of things can cause leaks on your tank. Skimmers, one of them. Very often we have skimmers that, you know, they're in small sumps. They overlap or come right near the edge of the sump. Yep. And so when you get an overflow, it doesn't just overflow back into the tank. In fact, it goes out of the tank. And we had one person who commented on Randy's video already who said, yeah, I wish I'd seen this video a year ago because I went away on vacation, came home, and it's thousands of dollars of repairs. It's, it's, it's like a, a skimmer overflowing onto your floor is, is kind of like the worst thing that can happen. Yeah, it's nasty right? too. Like it's, it's, it's the disgusting. worst water the, yeah. uh, of your aquarium, number one. Yeah. Uh, it is Our salt water, water is okay. It's not, it's not great, but it's right. a lot better than salt water. So, and so salt water is better than... And, nasty salt water. And then you're taking water out of the tank in that situation. Right. So then what's happening is your auto top off is kicking in, putting yes. more fresh water in. So basically... It just goes on forever. You're on a death spiral, right? Yep. Um, and if you don't know about it right away, um, it can not only kill your aquarium, it can cause thousands and thousands of dollars of damage to your nice floors. So this is a leak, de leak detection probe, right? Mm -hmm. um, this happens to be the, the weighted one. This is the solid surface leak detection probe. Correct. We also make a low profile one to like slip underneath things. If you were silly enough to put your aquarium on carpet. Yes, uh, but um, <laughs> you know, it just, it just goes right onto the sump. Um, it, we sell the uh, light leak detection kit which comes with our super handy and dandy FMM module and two of the solid surface probes. The FMM module is kind of the Swiss Army knife module. Um, right now it supports flow sensors, mm -hmm. it supports optical, um, sensors. optical sensors, and supports leak detection. Mm -hmm. And who knows? Who knows what comes who next? Who knows what's next? Uh, and you just plug it in. Boom. And as soon as you plug it in, did you just break it? <laughs> I don't know. I think I plugged it I mean, it you, in. Like, you like did it with the jaws of life in there. <laughs> I did kind of jam it in there a little bit, but All right. I think it'll be fine. I'm just giving it a hard time. I know. He didn't break but, it. But you don't have to do anything once you plug it in? No. Once you plug it in, um, it automatically detects itself as a leak detection probe, and then you just need to set it up. All right. So let's do that. Let's do that. Um, we go over to, guess what? A is task. Ra is Randy, do, Randy you still out there? Give us, give, us a, give us a clue that you're still alive, buddy. We're going to go to a task, and uh, in this situation here, I'm concerned with leaks, am I not? Yes, I'm concerned with leaks. And so you could be setting up a leak detection probe with our automatic top-off kit, or okay. you could have the LDK. Okay. And in this situation here... And by the way, e there are four ports on here, so if you wanted to add more leak detection probes, then come we, with the leak will, detection we will, kit. We will discuss... We will discuss add-ons later. Add-ons in a little bit. Okay. Parents get so excited. I know. Sometimes. All right. So you're All going right. through the. All right. I have one. Task. I have one FMM module on my system. Okay. You would plug in the um, leak detection probes into ports one and two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you would choose. So in this situation here, my Randy's FMMs. Listening. My so. FMMs for uh, uh, for ATO by default. So I'm actually going to choose. I'm going to try to throw uh, them off here. Port three Randy. and port four. Okay. And then I would send an alert. Okay. And so um, anytime now... So this, this doesn't set up an operation, it only sets up the alert. So we're going to touch that on that in a okay. second, just like Randy does. But right. anytime now this gets covered in water, right. you will get an alert that there are problems. And uh, you would get an alert based on that. Okay. So. What's next, Terrence? 
Who wants a paper towel in front of their tank in your living room? <laughs> I don't know what that is. So, uh, <laughs> Tim, Tim Allen, just put a paper towel under it. That's what Matthew mm, Duarte said. Mm, so, okay. anyway, we don't need to get into that. I, I know what they're, what they're talking about. Okay, so now what are we doing? What We're going to do we something doing? based on the LDK? Yes, yes. Okay. So, um, take us full screen for a, turn, uh, for a second. I forgot to rename the probe to default for setting the next thing. So let me just do Paul, that real Paul's quick. Paul's the man behind the curtain right yeah, now. Yeah, I just, I just, I forgot to do something because I have to explain something in a yeah, second. Yeah, we're look, I'm looking at, at, at comments anyway while we're doing this. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, uh, are there some uh, questions? Yes, yes, you can cook. Where can you get a Neptune shirt? The t-shirts are available from time to time as swag. These shirts um, are not available generally at all. Um, there's one time that they were given away uh, or sold, I should say, at a charity kind of auction uh, event that we did at Christmas last year, uh, and it was part of a kit that was $500 donation. Um, and other than that, they're just for staff. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to be getting some some. Shirts I've got some soon. other shirts he's, that I'm cooking up. Terrence I, has been. I got a lot of things going on, but I've got some pretty sweet new shirts coming. He's up. excited. He like. I, he's been talking about it for a little while. I really folks. think it's cool. Oh, and by the way, while Paul is doing that too, just to let you guys know, we did release a new version of the Android app. Forgot to talk about oh that. Oh my gosh. Um, so we have a new Android app. What's new and great about it? Um, well, a couple of things that you won't really see, which is we've we've redesigned the way that it's built so we can release more closely together both Android and iOS apps in the future. I, 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 feel, I feel like I've done our engineering team a disservice here by not talking about it's okay. this in our news. And then the, the, the next thing that it has, it makes Paul really happy because of the customer service side, which is yeah. the setup routine is a, a direct mirror of what we have in iOS, which is so simple and everybody's been talking about. Uh, so it's now on Android and iOS, a super so, simple setup experience. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I finally gave the Android um, the recommended distinction. Um, <laughs> you know, so uh, there was a joke a long time in the office, you know, of um, you know, somebody contacting or them trying to do something with an Android, and the, the solution is to just get an iPhone. Yeah, go buy an iPhone. Right? <laughs> um, and so, uh, and it's always had the recommended tag. Um, our engineering team mirrored that iOS experience so um, closely mm -hmm. that now both Android and iOS are always going to have a recommended tag in terms of the initial setup process. It's, it's, it's a big deal, it really yeah. is. And along with that now, we also have released into full release the dark mode support. Yep. Um, so for some people, they may not like it, for instance, on iOS. In other words, like, like Paul couldn't go on here and just change only our app to dark mode. It has to be everything. Your, yeah. your entire experience in iOS has to be in dark mode to be in dark mode mm -hmm. for the Apex. And, so, and you can set it up to day and night. Right? That's true. So um, when you set up dark mode preferences yeah. in your settings, you can say only do this at night, only mm -hmm. do this in the day, and you can set what the time of day and night is um, yep. as well. Um, so you can mirror that. Same thing I think goes for Android as well. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong there. But um, the dark mode looks really slick. It does. It looks yeah. really good. It's, yeah. it, it, some apps I don't necessarily like in dark mode. This one I like better in dark mode than I do in the, the original mode. And they just did a lot of uh, behind the scenes feature enhancements as well um, to make everything be very snappy. Happy. Yep. And um, big thing is that these will, any changes now we introduce, it's going to come to both operating systems simultaneously. Yep. So Near simultaneously. Very close. <laughs> it's going to happen simultaneously. Okay. <laughs> That's what they tell me. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to do now the, the LDK doing something, right? Okay. Yeah. So the next thing so that we got the alerts. On, now we want it to actually do something when it gets water. Do we want, are we showing the Randy video or are we going to just show it? Are we? I don't I think oh, we are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So Randy shows us how to do something with the LDK. Choose hmm. two sensors in ports one and two and hit send. Not only will you now get notified when the sensors trigger from water on the floor, but we can actually take this to the next level by automatically doing something about it by telling our skimmer to shut off if a leak is detected, potentially stopping further leaking until you can get there and fix the issue. To make this happen, all you need to do is click the skimmer outlet cog icon and add in a new line of text above the defer statement. For me and the current name of my sensor, that line reads, if my sensor name closed, then off. Okay. Okay. So, so there he shows it. All right. Um, so and essentially now we want to turn off the skimmer when that happens, mm -hmm. right? Um, the, the way that Randy showed it is the way that you would you would do this. Okay? Right. So I'd probably do a little bit of order operations different, which we'll touch on in a second. But so I just want to kind of recap one thing, which yeah. is uh, it, it's sometimes hard, at least it was for me in the beginning, to get the concept that your your thing, in this case your leak detection probe, is not the thing that's getting programmed to have an action on something else. It's the thing that needs to be controlled that has 
all of the kind of triggers in it of what to do on other things. You always have to think about what is the thing that I'm affecting. Correct. Right? Um, and everything in an Apex world, right, is I am inside this d device or outlet and I want an act to mm -hmm. cha and change on this device or outlet. So now I need to call everything that would that that could possibly influence Correct. that. Correct. And it's it, it is something in in terms of when you start to get into where you have to put a line of code in or what have you, you, you people have to get their mind kind of in the right place. We, are, we do have to use these words if and then, right? Yes. Which which can get a little scary, but it's not bad. But okay. If you just you don't have to really even understand that much about it. You yeah. just do what Randy says or do what you say, Paul, right. and it's going to work for you. So the first thing I want to talk about a little bit is just the switch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when these are put um, connected to our system, they are just given default names. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, up here in the top right hand corner of my screen, uh, which Vincent's going to switch over to here in a second. Um, Caught him sleeping. Yep. Uh, Joel texted. Ah, all right. So um, if uh, it, so, in the top right hand corner here, you see SWX nine underscore four. Right. What does that mean? That means SW switch. Okay. Okay. Then we have X nine. That is the ninth module in my system. Okay. So if I only had two modules, it would be you know X three. Okay. Okay. Because or and then if I had three modules, it would be X four. Right. Okay? Why am I? Look at this. You can't. Uh, sorry, dude. I, I took the. I said the do not disturb on. You did not set it on. I set it on. I just, kick off of there for a second. Oh, you did. What the hell? I know. I even. How does it do Unbelievable. that? Unbelievable. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Everybody's, Okay. All right, I'll be I'll be watching. Okay. <laughs> I don't so, know what's gonna come through on there. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh gosh. Now I'm like okay. So uh, the ninth module and it's plugged into the fourth spot. Okay, that's what that means. This is why we're using your iPad from now on. I know because I don't put text messages onto my iPad. Um, anyways, um, and so it's open or closed. Okay. Okay. So the tr the thing to remember, what does that mean? Open, closed. Right. It's okay? like a, it's it's referring to a switch when you close a switch. It's like or you open a, circuit, a switch. Right? It's a circuit. Yes. Right. And so, um, but a good way to remember what closed means for optical sensors and for leak detection sensors is closed means covered. Right. It's covered in water means closed. Okay. okay. So um, if an optical sensor is covered, it's closed. Okay. If a, if a leak detection probe is in water, it's closed because it's covered in water. Hey, look, Derek just gave me the answer. Okay. So I'd rather we do this right now. V Vincent, kick it off to, to Paul and I for the 30 seconds and do what he says. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. Okay. Let's fix this. Okay. So go to go to settings, and he says, uh, go to do not. Go to do not disturb. Make sure it's do not accept while unlocked. Vincent, you know what he's talking about. Yeah. Is it in settings? I believe so. Oh, man. Sorry, your iPad's so slow. Oh, man. Well, I will just spin here and answer questions. So what other questions we got, Vincent, while he's doing that? Because I really can't have those text messages <laughs> rolling through. <laughs> you don't have a question set up for me? There's something about the Android app being a little slow. Uh, I don't know about that. That's, that's, that's a Joe question. Okay, so somebody was talking about paper towels. Okay, so why do you use paper towels? Okay, and or a piece of cloth. The idea is is that it gives you a bigger area of detection, so that the water will wick up into the paper towel, and then affect the uh, uh, the leak detection probe, such that it will trigger it, and you don't have to uh, you have to wait for the water to get all the way over there because it's going to wick up. Were you able to do it? Yes. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. <laughs> There's no it reason could be to, really there's, bad. There's no, no reason to test it, anyone. <laughs> okay. Um, anyhow, um, all right, so we were talking about switches, closed, covered. All right, so now we go into the skimmer outlet. We just click the gear next to the skimmer outlet. Uh-huh. All right, and that was the programming from the task, okay? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if SWX... And so immediately we kind of see the problem. This is a problem because of all of the ones that look just like it. Because right? I have a lot of PM modules on my system and everything else. And so I'm just going to choose, I knew it's SWX9 underscore 4. And then I'm going to say if it's closed, because if it's covered in water, mm -hmm. turn my skimmer off. Okay. All right. So really, you just got to understand that open versus closed thing a little bit. Um, but if you don't want to understand it, I think just like Randy's video, it just put in the code here. It's going to work. Put in this line of, of text, and it's going to work for you. Uh, it, and you certainly, most people, 
if you if you don't understand all the details of this, you probably also don't have a super complicated system either, mm -hmm. which means it'll be even easier than Paul's. So then the next part of this is something that I probably would have done a little before mm -hmm. the programming, but um, we talk about renaming. So let's see how Randy shows us how to do that. which is something that you can copy and paste with any leak sensor you've added. Uh, here's a tip for you. If you want to make the sensors even easier to identify before adding them to the skimmer outlet, I highly suggest you rename them first to something that makes more sense. Oh. To do that, just click. No. Oh. <laughs> so we would do the same thing. I probably would have done that before. Correct. Right? Um, and the way that you rename it is uh, very simple, right? So we pulled these switches down from the unused tile bin. I have a lot of unused tiles. Right. Okay? So I'm not going to go through there, but I already pulled it down. Right. Okay? Um, and then I click on the gear right next to SWX9 underscore 4, and I'm going to change that to L-E-A-K, and then I'm going to use the word S-K. Uh, how about just skimmer leaking? So Terrence, <laughs> because of things that we don't understand. Yes, we are. We don't we understand are, why. We are not highly technical pr people. Probe names cannot be more than seven characters. Cannot be more than seven characters? No, they can't be less be than seven. Shoot. So <laughs> You're going to screw it up again. <laughs> Look, I've just been trained to always just think about... S six there, or less. Yeah, six or... No, it's six, six, than, six than or six... Uh, less six than six or, or, or equal to six. Less than or equal to six, yes. which is the same as six or less. Or, or less than seven. Or se less than seven, yes. Less than seven, not equal to seven. Yes. So okay. you will have to come up with some creative ways of naming your switches. We are not the people to ask that question to. Uh, if and when we have another trade show in California or at the next Magna, you can probably encounter some of our engineering team and you can ask the, them directly. There are, there are very good reasons for this. <laughs> there are very good reasons. <laughs> nice. I, I'm being serious. You held a straight face for that. That's so good. All yeah. right, let's move on. So um, <laughs> in this situation here, we're going to name it with six characters, Leak Ske. Leak Ske means Leak Skimmer. Okay. okay. Um, and now um, in my programming, it's still going to reflect um, that SWX thing unless it just updated, um, but... Uh, well, it takes time to do the round trip yeah, to... Yeah, the round trip Apex thing. to Apex mm -hmm. Fusion. Mm -hmm. It has to register in the Apex, and then Apex Fusion reads everything from the Apex back into it. So now, it, I could just reference that, though. L-E-K, SK. Okay. Right. Select that, and we're good to go. But it will automatically do it for you, too. Right, it'll change that automatically, and even if you never were to go back and do Correct. anything about it, it's automatically Paul's just shortcutting that. himself so he, does, he can see it the right way. Yep. Okay, perfect. So that's how you rename them, and that's how you can rename any one of the, um, the inputs mm -hmm. that are in the Apex in the, same, in, in the same manner. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're up to the next thing, right? Mm -hmm. So why don't, we, why don't we roll that one through? Because this is the one most people understand really um, well in terms of skimmers. Go ahead. From overflowing ever again. Let's talk about using optical sensors with the FMM ports to help solve your skimmer from overflowing in higher than normal sump levels or using them to alert you when your skimmate collector reservoir is full, ready to be cleaned, as well as shutting off your skimmer from filling up that reservoir even more. Regardless of what you're using your optical sensors for, first thing we want to solve is to shut off your skimmer when your optical sensor is triggered from a high water level or full skimmate reservoir, in which case we follow the same process we did for the leak detection sensor, only this time I'm adding a line above the defer statement that says, if optic three closed, then off. There we go. So now we're talking about these bad boys, which are the optical uh, sensors, mm -hmm. right? That are, you know, again, open or closed, right? right? If they got water on them, they're covered, they're closed. They have a cool magnet that you, you know, some of them come with a magnet. Some of them you might want to put this uh, hole in your, uh, like in your skimmer receptacle if you use a bucket. Really simple, any kind of, you can use a BRS uh, one gallon container mm -hmm. for a skimmer overflow, drill the bottom of it, put one of these sensors in it and connect it up like Randy said. Um, that's a great hack, by the way, is the, the, those one gallon deals. They're and really it's handy. really important that the mounting of these is always up. Yes. On its side or upside down, what's going to happen is it, even a single drop of water mm -hmm. on that point there, what that's going to cause is it for it to stay covered. Yes. Okay. Um, it, it's it, not it, it's, it's because not the of the sun. light. It's reflecting yes. the light inside and, so, and it'll cause it an issue. So you have them pointed up so the water drains down and off and you're good to go. Um, so th these plug in right into the FMM, right? So if you bought the leak detection kit, uh, you would have two, you know, separate uh, places additional to ports, put additional right? ports to put this in, and you could use one of them in, as a sump high, as mm -hmm. Randy showed. And if you wanted to have a skimmer collection cup, you could put one in there too. Mm -hmm. And uh, then a reservoir, skimmer reservoir, skimmer. Res the reservoir. Oh, yeah, it's so the, the external waste. Reservoir, waste yeah. yeah. 
So anyway, you could use either one of those. And then you'd want to turn off your skimmer if the water level got too high in your sump, mm -hmm. or if your thing got full because you wouldn't want it to go on the floor. So show us how we do that. And exactly how Randy showed us how to do that, right? We would um, go to our... Oh, somebody asked why is the ATK sideways. Si sideways is fine. It's just you don't want it to be pointed down, okay? So sideways is just, it's, it's not a problem. It's so, down that's a problem. So it's priority too is really important, okay? Uh, the leak on the floor is by far the most important thing. Okay, okay absolutely. So that happens. So we actually want to put this next statement above. So the, uh, this the, is the uh, alert, right? The alert. So when you get no, an this alert. Is the outlet. I'm in the outlet right now. Oh, you're in the right? outlet, okay. But we actually want to make sure it's above the uh, water on the floor. So we would say if skim. And so skim for me is the skim mm -hmm. reservoir. And if it's covered, you know. Right. Then off. And then we would also go to the email alarm outlet and do the same thing, mm -hmm. parents. Okay. Um, we go over to our email alarm outlet. Oh, oh no. I didn't mean to. <laughs> and uh, we can go to it from there. That's a system view where you can see everything. And you can see basically you can add a statement here where you can add that in if skim. And this is the. This is the alarm. Yep. So this is also where, again, it's a little bit more advanced thing in terms of the last thing that becomes true is what is going to be on your alert. So if the most important thing to you is getting a leak, then that is the last thing that you want to have on there. That way, if you have two conditions that become true, mm -hmm. the last one is one reports. And so it might be more important to you to get a leak detection on that than to know that your skimmer collection, uh, external skimmer collection vessel is full. You're going to get notified, if both are true at the same time, you're going to get notified at the one that's at the bottom of the list. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's just that's what's going to show up on your phone or what have you in the in the push notification. All right. And that, uh, that, okay. That's ba I mean, that's basically the way that you do it. Yeah, for know? sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay, so Randy d goes and talks about using some of the other sensors that you have with the Apex that come with it um, to detect something might be going wrong with your skimmer. He talks about pH, I'm not going to touch on that one. The one I think is, uh, as I think is a little bit more important, especially because people always ask me, why is ORP important? Why do I have this ORP probe? What can I possibly use this thing for? Um, so in, in that regard, go ahead and play that. Uh, do we, we have one for that? I think so. From a maximum flow rate, that will notify you when your skimmer pump falls outside of those ranges. The next few skimmer problem solvers don't necessarily need programming to set up or to implement, but by using them and monitoring pH or ORP coupled with some ORP. alerts, they can help mm -hmm. provide you with a window into your skimmer's performance and help troubleshoot or eliminate your skimmer as a potential tank issue. <laughs> yep. So. The ORP basically, I mean, and we're not going to get into a long ORP discussion, but, but ORP... It's your it, tank barometer. It's your, it's a, it is a tank barometer of yeah. knowing kind of the balance between the oxidizers in your tank and the pollutants in your tank, more or less, right? It's, yeah. And so if you, if you have a skimmer that's not working, you're, you're going to have a lot more pollutant in your tank than oxidizers that are going to take care of it, and that means it's going to drop your ORP in your tank. So many times people don't look at their skimmer under their tank for a while, um, and it may be running slower, maybe they don't have power monitoring turned on. Uh, and if you're in one of those situations, you quite likely will be able to see over time, especially a few days, your ORP drop out of what you consider your normal range. Right. Um, and um, we, we, we sort of switch over to the uh, view here. You can kind of see uh, what ORP is doing in my tank over the last uh, week or so. Mm -hmm. um, and I've changed a couple things in my tank recently. Number one, okay. I've increased the number of water changes I've been doing. Um, the tank got a lot of neglect during um, uh, us being out of the office mm -hmm. due to corona. Um, and uh, it took a long time to get back into a maintenance cycle for myself. Okay. Um, and my ORP got down into the low 200s. Right, so I was sitting around 200, 210, and what happened is my coral started looking a lot worse. You know, um, ultimately it wasn't any of my devices not operating appropriately. It was more of just I wasn't doing nutrient export right. with the water changes. Um, so what I've been changing recently is I, a I'm skimming more heavily now. 
Okay, so my skimmer is much uh, pulling out a much a much more wet skimmy. So your your RP is then rising. Yes, exactly. Okay, um, and because I'm pulling out a lot more. Water so your so baseline so. for your tank is changing a little bit because mm -hmm. of the way that you've done your tank. But for the average person, how do they set this up? How do they set up this this so uh, alert? With ORP, you're not going to set that up in the first couple weeks of a tank. Right. Okay. You're going to look at um, how, what the average level is. And so for right now... Um, and I'll stop you right there for a second. The, the other thing, too, that often is a question that you see out there is, uh, what's the ideal ORP or what's a too low or too high ORP? And there really isn't a uh, an exact number to point at. Now, there's some like super low numbers, like you wouldn't want your ORP to be 100 and you wouldn't want it to be 600. No. Okay, but generally somewhere between 250 and 450 is probably the average reef tank. But your tank should be able to sit in a range of maybe 50, right? Mm -hmm. So it could be 300 to 350 and if it pulls out of that range, it's, then you know something's going wrong. You basically look at your tank, if you're happy with it, Right. right. Take a look at your ORP and the behavior over the last seven days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Between water changes and nutrient export events, you should see kind of a, de a declination right. of ORP. Okay. Uh, the, the average slope, the average will be declining. Um, and um, by turning a skimmer off or something like that, you're going to see changes in that ORP and you see, should see those changes fairly quickly. If you don't see those changes fairly quickly, right, that could mean that your skimmer's not operating exactly correctly because you're not getting that. Right. Well, it could export. be over time, right? Yeah, so it's, it's one of time. these things that, you know, if you just had a little little bit of uh, uh, started to clog in your um, in your venturi you, you may not notice that in your ORP for three days as exactly. it gets until it gets below that say you had it at 300 level and so in if I were to set up an alarm for ORP now right I would go into uh, a task right and I would say the word alarm okay and then I would choose probe alarm hey Vincent just yawned oh my gosh <laughs> all right <laughs> thanks Vincent uh, Breaking choose, that fourth wall right ORP, there again. And we it's super simple, right? We average this and then you can put a value in here. For me right now, I'd probably do 200. Key thing is don't set it too tight to what you think your norm is because, you know, false alarms are really bad with any kind of monitoring because it makes you be complacent and makes you not pay attention to when you have a real and uh, it's situation. it's entirely normal that after you do feeding events, oh, for sure. you see a sudden change and drop in ORP. For sure. Especially if you're doing feedings that have a lot of like uh, sugars in it. Yeah, okay? So a lot of minos and sugars and things like that are going to disrupt ORP for a good hour and a half, two hours. And there's another thing we can do in an advanced, progr <laughs> advanced there are other programming things, yes. level where we can talk about how uh, to put delays in there and yeah, to not get alerts when get you have that, that but we're not going to get into that today. Okay, next thing, really cool thing that most people, and I've seen a couple of comments in here about a... It's, it's by far a, the best a, thing you can do with A float skimmer. switch in the yeah. skimmer cup, Joshen Schmitz said that. Um, so play that video. But there's one surefire trick to stop skimmer overflowing once and for all that I refuse to skip when setting up a skimmer on my Apex, and that's by installing a float switch in the lid to turn my skimmer off when the cup is full and tell me it's time to empty it. In most cases, using a float switch with your skimmer will require a little DIY to drill the skimmer. He's got drill. the vertical float switch of your choice, but once you've got that done, you can install the switch Break in your Neptune breakout box and you're ready to go. To add the switch to your skimmer in alerts, you can find the switch in your unused tiles. Here, my float switch is number one in my breakout box, which is the SW1 tile I pulled down to my dashboard. Okay. All right. So uh, it's one of these things that a lot of people um, have wanted to do. A lot of people do it. It's a little bit daunting for some because they, they, they have to start drilling into the, 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 the lid of their $350 skimmer. Some skimmers have switches already built into them yes. or attachments well, that you can make. Yeah, switches. or they have like a, already a knurled place where you could put one mm -hmm. in there. Um, but most do not. Uh, and so, you know, adding that does take a little bit of DIY. Yep. Um, and you do want to, this is, this is a, an add-on that most people will want to have. It's called the breakout box. Um, oh. Look at this breakout box. <laughs> That's old school. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, when we did, uh, this is for. So you hold it to the camera. If you got, if you got. You hold the, it to the camera, it's out of focus, but you can see they're if different. If you got the tab solution here, you're OP. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah, you you're BT. You're BT before Terrence. Yes, for you're sure. BT. Because this, this is at least a year already, or two before is, me. Yeah, but it's definitely got the branding that's that's definitely before Terrence for sure. Yeah. Uh, all, everything was blue. But Anyways. anyway, the, the breakout box is a cool way that you can hook up all sorts of dry switches to... Uh, you know, to turn things off and on or to give you alerts or to do all kinds of things. This is where you, you hook up the float switch, which here is one of the float switches. Okay, it's got two wires. Uh, one wire goes to ground. 
and one wire goes to the switch input. Yep. So in this situation, we're going to go to switch input one. And if you had multiple of these, you would put the, you know one wire from each one into the ground. So if you had, if you had three switches, you would put three switches into ground. And it doesn't matter which wire. Mm -hmm. They're both the same as far as hooking them up. So don't worry about that. Yep. But what you should worry about, though, is the quality of the switch that you get. Uh, it does matter, so it, it, the the cheapo ones from eBay will work, but they will fail. They will fail sooner than the good ones. Um, the ones that BRS sells, uh, Chicago, I think that they're from, they're from. Madison. What is it? Madison. Madison switches. Yeah. Madison switches. They they definitely are much better and worth the money. Uh, the other thing to note too, um, that's really important with this. I don't know that Randy touched on this. This is definitely a um, a, a recommended pro tip is that you only want to trigger when it's open. Right. Um, because when, A, if one of the wires were to come disconnected. I just open. taught you this, didn't it's I? It's open, OK? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if one of the wires were to come disconnected, yes. it's open. If the breakout switch this is more common. disconnected from the um, base unit. This is more common open. when you're working around in your tank or something like that, that you end up pulling this cord out. And if all of your uh, alerts were set to, to be only when they're closed, well, that condition would never happen right. because it's completely pulled out. So you want the condition, um, the, if you want the condition, the open condition mm -hmm. to typically be the trigger, right? Um, in, in the situation of the skimmer, right? right? So if it were to get disconnected, you know what? Send me an alert and also turn my skimmer off. Now here's okay. another good, good thing that somebody said, too. We can give them some info on. Float switches are, are too short, the wires, for, to go from the skimmer cup. So the key there is... You can get, uh, you know, another piece of wire. You can splice it in. The key thing is to keep those, you know, keep those contacts, solder them together. Uh, mm -hmm. Use a, uh, uh, you know, a marine grade, uh, like crimp type yeah. connector. Whatever you want, you can just you can extend them. They just don't want them to go underwater. And so, um, and so. Uh, open would be when the skimmer is up. Mm -hmm. And if you are testing this, right, um, you know, you're going to see that switch that Randy pulled right. down from the dashboard, okay? And uh, if you're, you're changing the state, okay? Right. Um, wait about 30 seconds to or a minute, maybe, right? You know, depending on your internet connectivity, um, because those switch inputs don't update immediately in Apex Fusion. Right. If you were in Apex Local, that'd be a different matter, but we aren't. And another interesting thing about these two that I saw on the forum recently is, You'd wonder why you don't make one of these that goes with a magnet that mm -hmm. connects to it. It's because this is actually magnetically controlled. There's a little reed inside there that when it goes up and down, it makes it open and close. And that's one of the things you're not going to necessarily know when you buy one of these. Maybe you will, but it still could have been installed incorrectly when it was made at the, at the factory. So as Paul said, once he gets it set up on here, you watch your dashboard, you hold it up, Make sure you give it enough time, like 30 seconds, to see if it's open or closed. And then you'll know if you want it in that state, mm -hmm. right, in, in where it is on here. If you don't, all you have to do is pull this clip off on the bottom, yep. flip this around, and now it becomes the other direction. Boom. Right? If you can't mount this the other way like right. that. Right. And then... Um, so show them how it works in here. And it's usually fairly simple for people who are using the breakout box off of the main base unit because all the switches are the first ones in the tray usually, aren't they, Paul? Mm-hmm. And they're labeled, instead of having a module number, they're just labeled SW1, yeah. SW2, SW1. et cetera. This is for a uh, breakout box that's connected to a base unit. Correct. Right? So um, I've already renamed that one. Oops. Um, so I'll use two. What happens when you pull a cord on an ATK? I don't know. The default to open. All right, so switch two some got put down at the bottom there, you know, right. and then I could then I would rename it first. Correct. Okay, so I'm gonna. In this case, it would be it'd be cup full, mm -hmm. which you can't put in because it's seven characters, so it'd be cup full with a a U L. And if you really wanted to make it sound like cup full, you would use an like an umlaut U on there, and then it would be we if they allow special characters. We do we do, allow special characters? I believe we do oh. support it. But umlauts. I don't know what the uh, I don't know I, I don't, don't know what the escape I, code I, is I, on that. I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> I called it cup skim. Hey, it's getting late in the in the live stream. I, I'm it's just trying to bring some levity into this, okay? <laughs> Our umlaut supported. And, that and is a great question. Look, uh, Derek just noticed that the BRS changed their website. Yes, they did. They yes. they had a website update this morning. And just so you know, there are some uh, there are some uh, some issues with uh, out of stocks that really aren't out of stock. I think. Look, somebody. Yes, you can cook it an umlaut. Uh, 
option U, he said, but we're on a, an iPad, so I don't know how that works. But anyway, um, yeah, the BRS site looks cool. Um, it's a big change for them. It's a big undertaking to change your website. So uh, I like the look, and uh, we'll see where that goes. So in this situation so what are we here, doing here? I am going to say if cup skim open, okay. I want open to trigger the off. Then Correct. Done. Perfect. Okay. And update. We're there finished. you go. You That's know, it. So there, um, did you want to show my thing or did you yeah. want to go over the power thing? What, which power thing? Oh, the restart power thing? Yeah. No, let's go over your thing just a little bit. Let's okay. talk about how you do it. Because I thought that was interesting because I've never used an optical switch for this. So th I, it, it works pretty well. Um, it's I, pretty hacky, man. When is, you talk it, about a hack, so Randy said that his was a hack. His no, looked like it was mine like is professional. A this is a hack. This, mine is a hack. I didn't use a drill bit. Um, <laughs> and I basically uh, dremel. Do you own off. a drill? Yes. I, oh, <laughs> come on. You're going gonna, to gonna do that here in front of everyone? <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, then I dremeled off the size of it. I do own a Dremel too, mm -hmm. um, and um, and uh, it fits nicely into the top of my skimmer reservoir there. So, so the, the part that I thought was going to cause a problem is errant amount of bubbles and whatnot yeah. would before it filled the cup would come up and touch that and give a false alarm. So at least on my skimmer, I don't get bubbles at the very top of this lip right here. Right. Okay. So this is above. This, yeah, because this the, thing, because this the neck goes on the inside here. Right. So right. So they come up in here and then they spill over that way. So I only get the bubbles at the very top top here when my skimmer cup is getting full. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the way that I program this is I used a virtual outlet um, that's called skim full. Okay. And, um, and basically if the skimmer cup, uh, stop, why? If the skimmer cup gets full, right. okay, or if this gets covered, right, to it, turn it off. But it has to be continually covered for more than 10 okay. seconds. And those, so those bubbles have to be constantly making contact with them. And then if it's continually covered for more than 10 seconds, um, you know, for 30 seconds. So now it's in, an, it's in a covered state for more than 30 seconds. I then turn this virtual outlet to um, um, stay on all the time. Okay. Okay. That then causes my skimmer outlet to turn off. Okay. You know, and I get an alert that my skimmer cup is full, um, and then I usually ignore it for a while. That's the part that I thought was uh, was interesting that you did, and I had never thought about that, which is, look, it's got to be really, uh, not just a bubble that happens to pop, but it has to be really something that's happening. Yeah, and I do and you may clean, And you may need to, to play with I this clean, if it's your I clean, own. I clean this off every uh, every couple months. Yes, you know, they so. did tell, so this is a, look, some, didn't you just tell us not to mount an optical but that's, sensor in the, that's if you... <laughs> water. That's what yeah. water. These are just bubbles. Right. right. So, um, in terms of that constant contact that that w the water is going to make versus and the bubbles, and it's time. It's time. Yes. Thirty so, seconds. Um, it's probably but not the best. Thanks for being that student, Steve. Yes. We appreciate that. And then I also <laughs> didn't use the drill bit. I, uh, I I cut and soldered, and that would void you void your warranty. Yes. So, yeah. um, Just drill the hole. And the thing. Oh, and the, the the pro tip I can give you guys on the acrylic is buy the acrylic drill bits. They're yeah. special drill bits. They cost a little more money. They've got a kind of cone-shaped, pointy kind of thing on them. They work great for acrylic. They won't, they won't crack it, and you'll be happy that you did it. Um, and then the only other thing that Randy didn't touch on, probably because they're going to have another episode about this, uh -huh. I imagine, is power monitoring. Okay. Um, Do we have time? Do we? Well, we're at our limit here. Let's leave this for the next one. How about that? All right. Well, you can also make sure that your skimmer is delayed if a power failure happens on your EV-832 okay. so it doesn't turn on at the right time. You can go to Chapter 6 of the Apex Comprehensive <laughs> Reference Manual and find out more about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hopefully, we've got uh, Mr. Suncrest Reef out there. Yeah. Um, name is... God, what did I John skip his name? Halsey. John Halsey. Yep. Uh, he is working on some content. Uh, I think to he's already created all of these guides and stuff mm -hmm. out in the forum, uh, out in Reef to Reef and whatnot. But uh, Paul, what happens to the Trident controlled dosing when the Trident is offline, or let's say reagent needs to be filled? Let's say I do not refill the reagent for a few days. If the Trident is in error, okay. So if the Trident mm -hmm. is in error, it just defaults back to your automated dosing amount, your nominal amount. Right, right. The, the baseline so, kind of. That so you when set. the Trident is in error, okay, it's going to automatically fall back to. You said it was twenty milliliters a day. Mm -hmm. Twenty milliliters a day. The Trident is no longer going to influence that um, mm -hmm. additive amount. Excellent. Well, I think uh, yeah. Dave Trong also says step bits work all step bits work well for uh, mm -hmm. acrylic as well. Yeah. Um, as the uh, the ones made just for um, uh, for acrylic, but I 
I, if I know I'm going to need a half an inch, I like then I don't miss with the step bit. So anyway, <sighs> uh, some skimmers Rosano do come with uh, with switches built into them. Some of them connect up into their DC controllers to shut them off there. You could cut those off and splice them into the Apex and there and are, breakout box. There are, there are finished products that you can just also kind of attach to your skimmer lid that will do this as well. There's yeah. all sorts and of... Yeah, and there's skim eight, like yeah. reservoir things too that have switches in them that you Easy. can connect to a breakout box. There's lots of, uh, there's lots of great add-ons that, that you can make for yourself or you can buy that go into the breakout box or that go into one of the six port connectors. Anyway, guys. That was a great episode. Yeah, I uh, hope you guys let us know. Let us know if you like us breaking down this stuff and getting a little bit deeper into it. Um, if we're not getting deep enough for you guys, let us know that, right? If uh, it's too complicated and boring, let us know that too. Uh, if you want to know, if you want somebody else to be on the live stream in the future, some you know reef celebrity or what have you, um, let me know. I'll try to get them on the show and tell me what questions you want me to ask them, and we'll yeah. do that as well. I mean, this is a show for our control freaks, right? Yep. And uh, Absolutely. You know, so uh, give us in, give us input. Let us know if you liked this format. I am super excited about the other things that BRS is going to be going oh, yeah. over in the Mastering Apex series. Randy's got some great stuff planned. Yeah. Um, you know, we're working with them as well to, you know, to kind of guide them in some of these ideas and we're just brainstorming on stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so the the Mastering Your Apex series is uh, is going to be gold. I'm right. really excited about it. Uh, uh, so that's it. Tim, I can't wait for you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, guys. So that's it, Paul. Yep. Till next time, and maybe it'll be next Tuesday. We'll see what Randy comes out with with his next one. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Um, subscribe to the BRS channel and uh, enjoy those fish. We'll see you next time. See you guys. And we're out. <laughs>